डिनोमिनेटर इज ओनली इफ डिनोमिनेटर इज वन फॉर एग्जाम्पल इफ यू आर हैविंग नंबर वन वन डिवाइड बाय वन यस वन डिवाइड बाय वन आंसर इज वन इट इज अचुरल नंबर टू डिवाइडेड बाय वन या इट इज अचुरल नंबर अदर देन वन इफ यू आर हैविंग एनी नंबर इन डिनोमिनेटर then that is not a natural number so we can have natural number in fraction form only if denominator is one otherwise it's not possible okay actually when it comes to a question that of the form number in fraction form we always consider other than one so whenever anybody ask you can we have natural number in fraction form say no it cannot be in fraction form because a natural number is having a exact number form it does not take any decimal form and it exists only if in denominator we are having one you can state answer of this type okay hope uh, your natural number is uh, very much clear least natural number is one last natural number does not exist and uh, fraction form for the natural number is not possible now next next set whole number notation is scripted w or you can say fancy w or you can say bold w it starts from 0 0 comma 1 comma 2 comma 3 comma 4 comma dot 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 this is the whole number difference between the natural number and whole number is that natural number starts from 1 and goes to infinity goes to infinity means last number does not exist similarly for whole number it starts from 0 and goes to infinity even here last number does not exist and from here we can say see that all the elements of my question is that is every element of whole number is every element of whole number question is every element of whole number present in natural number so your answer is answer is no why what is the reason behind this what i am asking is every element of whole number present in natural number no not every element of whole number present in natural number because we can see that there exists a number 0 which is present in whole number and which is not present in natural number so this is the answer no because element 0 element or number you can say element 0 is present in whole number but not in natural number so this is the answer what else and from this uh, we understood that 
every element of natural number is in whole number. Okay, good. So this we have studied in our eighth class. I will move to integers. These are the important aspects that I'm revising. I'm revising almost everything, but the things which are very important, the difference between the two sets. Natural number is a set of numbers. Whole number is a set of numbers. Difference between them is that zero is the element, or you can say number, which is present in the set of whole number, but not in set of natural number. So this is the main difference between them. Now, integers when it comes to integers what ideas do we get uh, integers is nothing but it is also a set collection of numbers collection of the numbers of the type positive numbers negative numbers including zero without decimal means it does not include decimal in fraction part it does not include fraction part other than that it includes each and every number so integers Yeah, integers, we have seen that integers is denoted by capital I, but <laughs> as you will move to higher classes, instead of I will be using scripted Z for integers. So right now, as we are using in I for integers, no issues. We will follow the book, the notation that they are using. Integers in this number starts from minus infinity, means Negative number also does not exist, goes to minus 3, minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on. So, this all are the numbers included in integers. Now, uh, what is the observation regarding this integers? Observation is that it includes positive number as well, negative number as well, and 0. Zero is neither negative nor positive. We should remember this. This is a number. Neither negative nor positive. What else uh, do we understand from this? We understand that any number which is present on the right hand side is always greater than the number present on the left hand side. Say zero is dividing your set of numbers. I will be drawing a number line. In between, we are having zero. This is our right hand side, and this is our left hand side. Say one, two, three, four, five, six. Minus one, minus two, minus three, minus four, minus five, minus six, and so on. So on. This is one, two, three, four, five, six. This is minus one, minus two, minus three, minus four, minus five, minus six, and so on. Now you can see that zero has divided the whole number line into two parts. That is positive side, and this is the negative side. Okay. Positive side is called as right hand side. And negative side is called the left hand side of the number line. Say any number if I'm selecting, my statement is that any number present on the left hand side. Suppose I'm selecting minus one. So any number that I'm selecting from left hand side of minus one will always be less than minus one. If I'm selecting five, any number on the left hand side of that number five. Will always be less than five. We can take example. I've given you example orally. Now we can take example by selecting a number. Say I've selected minus three. I've selected minus three. Now, if we are going to select any number from left hand side, now left hand side, uh, my minus three is here. This is the right side of minus three, right hand side, and this is the left hand side. If we are going to select any number from left hand side of minus three, it will always be less than minus three. Say I've selected minus six. 
minus six is less than minus three. True. If you want to select from right hand side, then minus three will become smaller. Say I'm selecting minus one, so minus three is less than minus one. Yes, even it is true. So from here, what we have understood that any number that you have selected from left hand side of the number that you have selected will always be what less than the selected number. So if I am selecting say number five. So any number that you select from left hand side, say four, yes, four is less than five, three, even three is less than five, two, two is less than five, one, one is less than five, zero, zero is less than five, minus one, minus one is less than five, minus six, minus six is less than five. So any number, but once you select number from right hand side, that is a six. So six is greater than and it changes. So hope things are clear. And uh, definition of integer is that the number of the form which is positive, negative, including zero without decimal. Without decimal means it does not include any decimal number. What do you mean by decimal number? Number of this form, 0 0.5, 1, 1 by 3. 1 by 3 means 0 0.3333. Even this we are going to discuss. This is of the type. Non recurring terminating. Say one. We will discuss this non recurring, non terminating, recurring, terminating of that type. Here we can see that one by three is 0 0.3333. It is recurring, but it is not terminating. It's going on and on and on. So we are going to write this form of a number of the form 0 0.3 dot. Dot indicate this three is appearing again and again. Okay, let's move to rational part now. Hope integer is also clear. So, if anybody is going to ask you a question based on integers, that Is 1.0 belongs or is in integers? Is 1.0 is in integer? First of all, find the value of 1.0. 1.0 is same as 1. And check whether 1 is present in integers. Yes, it is in integers. If somebody is going to ask you a question, 1.3. Present in integer. Check what is the value of 1.3. 1.3 is same as 1.3. Now check one, and after that one, we are directly going to two without considering a values in between one and two. So you can see that 1.3 is not an integer. So it is not an integer. So integer is without decimals. Regarding negative numbers, the whole part. It starts from minus does not exist number to positive does not exist number. Why does not exist? Because the last number which we can select or which we can tell never ends the given set. So I'm saying 10 crore is the last number of integers positive. So no, that is not the end. Nah. Even number after 10 crore exists. So that's why we say that it does not exist. Means any number which is not in existence, we cannot say or we cannot define that number to be a last number. Is of the form does not exist. Now we'll move to rational numbers. Rational numbers. The notation that we are going to use is 
स्क्रिप्टेड क्यू और पेंसी और बोल्ड क्यू कैन से तो नंबर ऑफ द फॉर्म द फॉर्म ऑफ द रैशनल नंबर इज ऑफ द फॉर्म पी बाय क्यू वेर पी कॉमा क्यू बोथ आर इन पी इज इन इंटीजर्स क्यू इज इन Now additional condition is being imposed on this Q. P should be integer, Q should be integer. Yeah, this is clear because uh, before uh, giving this concept of rational number, we have uh, discussed about P and Q. Okay, what do we mean by integer? Positive number, negative number, including zero. But when we say that P and Q both are integer, means uh, even P can take. Value zero and Q can take value zero. Additional condition is imposed on Q since Q is in denominator. Q should not be equal to zero. P should be integer. Q should be integer and Q should not be equal to zero. For example, number of the forms say P is minus one, Q is two. Yeah, it is integer. Ten upon minus seven. Yeah. As one minus one is integer, two is integer, so it is forming this definition, satisfying the condition, and q not equal to zero. So hence it is a rational number. So ten upon minus seven, it is integer. Minus seven is also integer. So it is of the form p by q with this condition. P integers, q integers, and q not equal to zero. So even this is a rational number. So any number of this form. Is a rational number. So this is a definition. So definition of the rational number is that the numbers of the form p by q are called rational number, with p and q both should be integers, and condition that q should not be equal to zero. So uh, when it comes to a concept of Uh, basic ideas between any two rational numbers between any two rational numbers we are having infinite number of other rational numbers yeah even that is correct so this i will open this idea in front of you so that things will become very clear to you This is number zero, and this is one. If somebody asks you, "Okay, how many numbers are there between these two numbers, zero and one? How many?" Numbers are present. Between zero and one, so your answer should be infinite. We cannot count actually the number because in order to reach to one, let it be that is uh, very far away. In order to reach to zero point one. We have infinite numbers, say zero point zero 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 zero, somewhere like this. This many numbers are present, or even more than this, between zero and zero point one. So imagine how many numbers will be present between zero and one to reach to one. even we can't reach to 0.1 properly it is just a convenience uh, that we don't go to uh, nano or hexo part we just 
कंसीडर we just consider 1 by 10 part 1 dividing by 10 means we are just considering 0.1 we are considering 2 divided by 10 means we are just taking 0.2 and so on means we are not bother about the nano part and all that this is a study of higher standard here just we want to see that how many numbers so your answer should be infinite this is the answer so that you can easily answer to any any of them whoever ask a question to you that how many number x is present between 0 and 1 your answer should be infinite number of present between 0 and 1 so this is 0.2 0.3 0.4 and so on till we reach 1 if we are having 10 points between 0 and 1 means we are dividing 1 by 10 points so what is the value of one step that we are taking is 0.1 if we are having or we are taking four points four points between 0 and 1 say 1 2 3 and 4 so dividing 1 by 4 so value of one step will be 0.25 so we can write this is 0 this is 0.25 this will be 0.5 this will be 0.75 and this will be 1 so one step is of 0.25 say somebody says sir uh, instead of dividing uh, 0 and 1 by here we have divided by 4 so take next say 3 and this is 4 and dividing it into five points or five parts say 1 2 3 4 and this is fifth part so what is the value of uh, one step here this is the one step that we are taking towards 4 so 1 distance between 4 and 3 is 1 and 1 divided by how many 5 points so this will be 0.2 so one step is of 0.2 so this is 3.2 3.4 3.6 3.8 and here comes 4 okay so uh, these are the uh, basic ideas so we can divide as we can see there that we can divide 1 by 4 1 by 5 1 by 5 1 by 10 1 by 20 1 by 100 and similarly by any of the largest number as the number in denominator say 1 upon denominator as denominator tending to infinity tending to infinity means becoming larger and larger this value becomes smaller and smaller this value will become smaller and smaller as you can see as we have taken 1 divided by 4 value is 0.25 as denominator increases the value reduces earlier it was 0.25 then it became 0.2 and the as the value will increase in denominator our value of the form 1 upon will be tending to 0 okay so this is the basic idea behind uh, rational numbers uh assuming that you know how to solve uh, mixed fra mixed uh, fraction to fraction form uh, we can see that now uh, we will be plotting some numbers on a number line say we need to plot 1 by 2 1 by 2 on a number line first we should know what is the value of 1 point or 1 by 2 on a number line 
this means we are dividing one by two. One by two. So as we can see that uh, one is smaller than two. So take a help of point, or you can say decimal. Now two fives are ten. This is zero. So value we got of half is zero point five. When we are seeing one by two. One by two. In order to plot it on a number line, we should find its actual value in the form of decimal, so that we can uh, recognize it on a number line. So this is zero, and between zero and one, we are having a midpoint, and this is our zero point five, which is nothing but half. Okay. Similarly, if somebody asks you to plot Three by four. Again, what you need to do, you need to just do the same calculation that we have done here. Four dividing three, that is zero point. Taking the help of decimals, seven is twenty-eight. So again, two. As it is smaller, take help of zero. As you have taken decimal, the five is. Zero point seven five. Zero point seven five. Where it will lie? Zero point seven. So first check for point seven. Zero point eight. So between zero point seven and zero point eight, we are having mid of zero point seven and zero point eight. That is five. Five indicates mid of. So. This is nothing but zero point seven five. Zero point seven and zero point eight. Mid of zero point seven and zero point eight is zero point seven five. That is nothing but average. So uh, we will plot some negative number as well. Say we are having uh, minus four by five. What we will do? We will just uh, find value of four by five. Five dividing four. This is zero point eight minus forty. This is zero. The value of this is zero point eight, but with negative sign. Just Take the negative side. In between, we are having zero. Right hand side one, or we will not write it so close so that it will not appear. As per requirement, we can see that the decimal is in the form of zero point eight. If it would have been one, two, three, then uh, directly a number will do. But as we can see that it is in decimal, just make sure that it appears clearly. Here one, and somewhere here will be having minus one, and we can see that it is minus zero point eight. So we'll be dividing it into ten parts: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So this is minus zero point one, minus zero point two, minus zero point three. Minus zero point four, minus zero point five, minus zero point six, minus zero point seven, minus zero point eight, and this is minus zero point nine. As we are moving to left, we are taking a negative. But as we will move to right side of zero, this will be nothing but zero point one, zero point two, zero point three, zero point four, zero point five. Zero point six, zero point seven, zero point eight, zero point nine, and after that one. Okay, so this is the way of plotting as per requirement. If we can uh, see that we are having some uh, number of the form which is having decimals away from each other, so as per requirement. 
say we are having uh, 13 by 10. Thirteen divided by ten. Now we know that any number divided by ten just apply decimal to the form. You will get the number. So this is one point three. One point three. We can see that it appears between one and two. So while drawing a number line, you can give a gap of point one here also. No problem. This is your zero. Uh, so this is your one. Now, the case is that you arise in front of you that if you don't have that much of space, you can uh, reduce the step length or you can just take 0 0.1, 0 0.2, no problem. But as we can see that the requirement is a 1.3. So I'll be taking a point between one and two. So this is one, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay. So one point nine after that two. So this is one point one, one point two, and this is a point one point three. If instead of positive, they're asking you to find minus, so it will become minus one point three. So to left hand side, this is minus one. And this is minus two, say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. This is minus 1.1, 1 .1, minus 1 1.2, and this is the point, say minus 1.3. Okay. So this is the basic idea how to plot a number. Now, uh, we will see how to convert the mixed fraction to a fraction form and then plotting it. Say, they're asking us to plot one and three quarter. One and three quarter. We just uh, solve this. How to solve, as we can see that this is one upon one as there is no denominator plus three by four. Denominator is not same. So just make denominator same. One into four upon one into four plus three upon four. So this is four plus three upon denominator is same now. That is four. So answer is seven by four. Now just divide it. Divide seven by four. So ones are four. Ten minus four is three. As three is smaller than four, just take take the help of decimal. 0. So here 4 7s are 28. So 2 is the remainder. And again 0, 5s are minus 20 upon 0. You can see that 1.75. We got it as 1.75. So how to plot this now? Value of 1 and 3 quarter is 1.75. Its fractional part is 7 by 4. Its decimal form is 1.75. This is 0. This is, say, 1. This is your 2. As we can see, that 1.75 lies between 1 and 2. So we will take a step of 0.25 then. Here, 1. Two, three, and four. Here also, one, two, three, then four. Okay. So this is 0 0.25, 0 0.5, 0 0.75, 0 0.75, 0 0.75, 0 0.75, 0 0.75, 0 0.75, 0 0.75, 0 0.75, 0 0.75, 0 0.75, 0 0.75, 0 0.75, 0 0.75, 0 
this is 1, 1.25, this is 1.5, this is 1.75 and this is 2. So this is the number. So as we get, I have seen that, okay, yeah, if somebody asks us, okay, can we take a step size of 0 0.1? Yeah, yeah, even you can do that. But what do you need to do then? This is 1.7, this is 1.8. Between 1.7 and 1.8 is 1.75. Even this will do. No issues. So as per uh, requirement and convenience and our understanding, uh, we can uh, easily plot the number. So it's all about uh, rational number and their uh, plotting on a number line. This we have done in our eighth standard. So comparison of rational numbers now. Basic idea behind uh, comparison of rational number is that suppose we are having one rational number A by B, second rational number C by D. We can directly say A by B is greater than C by D if A into D, just do cross multiplication, A into D is greater than B into C. We are going to say A by B less than C by D if A into D is less than C into B. Or else we are going to say that it is equal if A into D is equal to C into B. This is a basic idea. Uh, we will take uh, one example. If We are having 1 by 2, 1 by 3. Now, which one is greater? Yeah, obviously, this is greater. Why? Because this is value is 0 0.5 and its value is 0 0.33. But how do show this? Just do cross multiplication. So 1 into 3, 1 into 2. We got 1 into 3 as 3, 1 into 2 as 2. 3 is greater than 2. Done. So uh, we will stop here and uh, we'll continue with uh, more problems. That is uh, the rational numbers, including negative numbers, both negative, one negative, one positive, with zero, positive, zero and negative, and so on. Okay, everyone, thank you. Hello, Mayur sir. Hope you don't have any doubt. We just uh, revise whatever we have done today. And tomorrow we will uh, do the remaining part. Along with the decimal representation of numbers, rational number, then after that irrational number. Hello, Mayur, sir.
हेलो सर हेलो सर सॉरी सर टेक्निकल इश्यूज थे थोड़े हेलो हेलो सर 